<laughs> Welcome to another episode of Sunday Club Online. I'm thrilled to be back with you this week to explore our faith and see how God is working in our world today. I have some announcements, mainly about our enchanted forest. October is here and it's the time that we open up the trail and create an enchanted forest for the community to come and trick-or-treat. If you haven't already signed up and let us know what your costume choice is, please do that so that we don't have duplicates and so that we can get you a candy shoot to decorate according to the theme of your set. Be sure to invite your family and friends to join us on October 30th from 2 to 5 p.m. I so look forward to seeing you there. This week, we're going to hear about a privileged man who was invited to follow Jesus. As a matter of fact, he's the one person in the whole of the Bible that Jesus invited to be a disciple and declined. But I think the reason will surprise you. We'll read from the book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 17 through 31. If you have a Bible, feel free to read along. I'll start here. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud and honor your mother and father. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven, and then come follow me. When he heard this, the man was shocked and went away sad, because he had so many possessions. Even though the man in our story had led a wonderful life, he went away sad because he was looking for more. He may not have been blind or deaf, but he was suffering from some sort of dis-ease. He wanted more. Do you wish you were rich? Are you sure you aren't already? I had a single mom for most of my teen years, and there were times when she worked more than one job and sometimes worked through the night to provide for my brother and my sister and I. It wasn't easy, and there were times when we had no phone or would have a sudden candlelight picnic for dinner because there were no lights that night. One of my favorite memories was one Christmas when my mom gifted me a pair of slippers, and in her beautiful way, she wrapped each slipper in a separate box so that it looked like I had more presents under the tree. Weird thing is, growing up, I never felt poor. I was always aware that there were people in the world who had no food and some that were not that far away who didn't have a place to sleep. It was early in my life that I learned the phrase, there but for the grace of God go I. And all that really means is I could easily be in the same tough situation as someone else. There are many ways to be wealthy, but a grateful and generous heart is so important in the life of a Christian. In the movie It's a Wonderful Life, George Bailey learns that no man is a failure who has friends. And in this scene, it always makes me cry a little, we see George's brother Harry toast his older brother. Harry's toast says a lot about wealth and how it should be measured. Oh, I left right in the middle of it. As soon as I got Mary's telegram. Good idea, Ernie. A toast. <laughs> to my big brother, George, the richest man in town. George Bailey didn't have the most money in town, but his life was full of riches. This scene reminds us of what truly matters, 
family, friends, and the relationships that we've built over the years. No matter what our bank accounts say, we each have the opportunity to be rich. Then there's the saying that health is wealth. Our incredible bodies try to tell us when we're overwhelmed, but often we miss the cues. Feeling tired, sore, or cranky are all signs that we're holding on too tight to something that God hasn't put on our hearts. That big empty feeling inside can cause us to really explore what's happening in our hearts and souls. As believers, we're asked to follow the example of Jesus, to have hearts that are open and accepting, to acknowledging how rich or blessed we really are, to help the poor, honor the world created for us, and to be welcoming to those with abilities different than ours. The privileged man had everything he wanted, but he didn't feel whole. When Jesus invited him to follow, the man walked away sad. He chose to hold on to his things too tightly to take Jesus' hand and join the great adventure. Do you read our newsletter each week? I wrote about a time that my tensed muscles distracted me from what I knew I knew. I learned that practicing letting go can help us find peace. Let's do this together. Get in a comfortable place, sitting or laying down, and practice letting go with me. As I speak, we'll tense our muscles gradually for a count of 15, and then slowly release for 30 seconds while I guide us. Be sure to breathe deeply into each tense and release. Are you comfy? Here we go. Sometimes if we feel angry, our hands might tense up into fists. It's okay to be angry, and sometimes our feelings of anger are too big for us to carry. Squeeze your hands into fists as hard as you can. And then relax your hands, saying, Jesus, I give you my anger. If we're worried about something, our forehead may tense up. This is what I wrote about in our story this week. Sometimes we worry so much that we start to feel afraid. Tense your forehead really hard. Then relax and say, Jesus, I give you my worry. When we're excited, we may tense up our cheeks and our jaw. I know I do this a lot when I'm excited. Even happy feelings like excitement can make our bodies tense. When we feel overwhelmed by excitement, we can ask God to help us. Clench your jaw real tight. Ooh. And then relax and say, Jesus, I give you my excitement. When we feel scared, we may tense our legs. This is our body's way of getting us ready to run away. Sometimes we feel scared even though our brain knows nothing is wrong and that everyone we are with is safe. This tension can make it hard to control our bodies. Sometimes it gives us like the wiggles. Do this. Squeeze your muscles through your legs. Pull them very, very tight. Extend your feet and your toes straight out. And then relax and say, Jesus, I give you my fear. When we're bored, we might feel restless. When we're waiting for something that we want, we may feel eager. Both of these feelings may make us feel impatient and make our feet feel tense. Squeeze your toes and your feet. Pull your toes in, curl them tight, and then release them, saying, Jesus, I give you my wiggle. Did you feel peace while breathing into your muscles? Which part of your body was the easiest to pull in? Which one was the hardest? It feels good to let things go whether it's tense muscles, big expectations, or even bad habits. All the things that stop us from being the change we'd like to see in the world. If we have privileged positions, just like the man in our story did, we have to be mindful. Dealing with our lives may become more important than serving others, doing good work, or even making time for family, community, and faith life. It may stop us from opening ourselves to an unexpected nudge from God. And our privilege may make us arrogant or insensitive to the people around us. Jesus' encounter with the privileged man tells us that it's hard to motivate yourself to change the world 
If you're already sitting on top of it, those gifted with privilege have a responsibility to share their wealth, to make things a little better for everyone, just like Jesus did. Will you pray with me? Dear Father, thank you for all of the ways that you bless our lives. Help us to remember that every life is precious and the things that you have blessed us with are there to be shared with those who you may not have touched yet. Help us to be your feet in this world and your hands in our community. Help us to go where you would go and be the change that you would love to see in our world. You have blessed us beyond imagination and we are so grateful. And all God's children said, Amen. Have a great week. Be sure to send me your costume choice, and I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.